Agent Lane's eyes scanned over the document he'd been sent. The decryption program had finished unraveling the sensitive data that the SCP Foundation's cybersecurity kept hidden beneath layers of encryption. It had been a few hours since he'd received the leaked document, sent to him from a mole that had been active within the ranks of Foundation personnel for some time. And as for what was on this secret document, it was an intake list, the records and names of everyone recently brought into D-Class. Lane scoured the rows upon rows of inmates, violent criminals, the worst of the worst that the Foundation used as human lab rats. Then his eyes settled over one name, the exact one he'd been looking for. The true identity of a man codenamed The Hatchet, a mass murderer responsible for coordinating multiple acts of international terrorism. But to Agent Lane, this man wasn't a threat to be feared. He was a bait in a trap for something far worse. The Global Occult Coalition had long been the face of officially sanctioned legitimacy in the fight against the anomalous. While the SCP Foundation operated in a more clandestine fashion, the GOC was operated by and acted under the authority of the United Nations. They were mandated with policing the paranormal world, a role nobody in the GOC took lightly. Their ultimate goal was a world rid of all anomalies. While the Foundation opted for containment, the Coalition preferred extermination. But despite this fundamental difference in their operational structures, the two organizations maintained a fragile alliance, which is why Agent Lane needed bait in order for his plan to work. The objective was simple. Kill SCP-096, also known as the Shy Guy, an anomalous entity with a long, disproportionate human body that could use impossible speeds to kill anyone that looked at its face, even through an image. That was what worried the GOC. It seemed all too easy for SCP-096 to be used as a weapon, especially for assassinations. It wouldn't take much for the Foundation to mail a photo of SCP-096 to anyone, say a politician who opposed them or the head of another group of interest. Then all they'd have to do is sit back and wait as SCP-096 dispatched its unwitting target, along with any witnesses that happened to see it appear. So the Coalition had decided it was time to take the Shy Guy off the board, before anyone got any unsavory ideas. But there was still one issue with that. Given the GOC and SCP Foundation's rocky relationship, Agent Lane had been instructed to leave no trace of the Coalition's involvement. He needed someone else to be responsible for the actual elimination of SCP-096, so that the GOC could deny any and all involvement. That's when he'd gotten the idea. Who better to call on for a covert, strictly off-the-books mission? Only one of the world's most elite special forces units, with no affiliation to the GOC whatsoever, Delta Force. Engineering a scenario where Lane could get the Deltas to take out SCP-096 was going to be tricky. He couldn't give them a direct order to kill the creature. That could too easily lead back to the GOC. So the mastermind behind this mission needed to think outside of the box. How could he get the attention of Delta Force? Well, by offering up one of the world's most wanted terrorists. After all, Delta Force was renowned for undertaking missions that involved counterterrorism, as well as the securing and sometimes elimination of high-value targets. And that was where the hatchet came into plan. Given the severity and extreme nature of his many crimes, he was certainly considered high-value by the U.S. government. However, it was while awaiting trial that the hatchet had disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The official story was that he had died in prison following a fight with another inmate, but rumors circulated about an escape attempt. Of course, neither were correct. Now Agent Lane knew the truth. The Foundation had him, which means he was within the reach of the GOC. Issuing a coded command to his mole working inside the SCP Foundation, Lane instructed that the hatchet would be making an escape of sorts. At least, that's how it would appear, but it would be completely staged. Under the cover of night, the mole drugged and kidnapped the hatchet, breaking open an air vent and making it look like someone had crawled their way through. Nobody had, and instead the hatchet was carried unconscious to a Foundation vehicle the mole had hotwired. If he drove off in his own car, the Foundation would be able to trace the escape back to him, and then the GOC. Bundling the terrorist into the trunk, the mole drove several miles away from the Foundation site to an extraction point where Agent Lane was waiting. 
So he's how you're gonna lure out the Delta Force, the mole said as he and Lane lifted the hatchet aboard the chopper. But how are you going to get SCP-096 to come out too? Foundation keeps it crying in that cell. They can't stop it getting out when someone sees it though, right? Lane replied. Yeah, it moves way too fast, the mole confirmed. All someone has to do is look at it, and it can get out even when... Even when they look at a picture of it, the agent finished his sentence. Oh. The mole gasped, realization spreading across his face. Our friend the hatchet here isn't just bait to lure out Delta Force, Agent Lane explained. He's bait for both. SCP-096 and Delta will both be coming after him. That way, as far as the Foundation knows, SCP-096 will be killed during a standard Delta Force mission to recapture an on-the-run terrorist mastermind. And meanwhile, the GOC gets complete deniability. It was nothing to do with us. We weren't involved. <laughs> Perfect scapegoat, the mole commented. Thing is, if this is meant to be such a covert mission, then why risk security by telling me? Dead man don't talk. Agent Lane replied quietly, pulling a silenced handgun from his holster and squeezing the trigger, firing three times for good measure. With the loose end tied up, nothing linked the global cult coalition to the hatchet's apparent escape. Sure enough, the Foundation fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. While they were busy locking down the facility, sealing the air vents that they believed their D-Class prisoner had escaped through, Agent Lane had the hatchet handcuffed, securely under lock and key. The helicopter took them a short distance to a quiet airstrip, where they boarded an uncharted plane to a safe house. To avoid any further links to the GOC, Lane had to transport the hatchet as off the grid as possible until they got him to their destination. Even then, the safe house couldn't be one that the GOC had ever used before. Any link in the Foundation or Delta Force would smell a rat. The leaked intelligence that was soon received by Delta Force seemed to confirm their worst fears. Not only was the hatchet still alive, but he was free and apparently hiding out in a safe house. While they would never publicly acknowledge the unit's activities, the Department of Defense issued an objective to Delta Force, track down the hatchet to his current location and either capture him or kill him. A squad of some of the most highly trained United States troops were assembled. Before joining Delta Force, most of them had been recruited from the elite 75th Ranger Regiment, as well as from other branches of Special Forces and the wider U.S. Army. The team wasn't told by their commander, whose identity was classified, where they were going. All the information they were given was only the essentials, just that there was a high-value target holed up in a safe house. Although they had no idea there would actually be two, only the second was unlike anything the Deltas had ever seen. Agent Lane was watching over hidden infrared cameras. They were sent to cut out the minute the lights came on. No point in going through all this trouble, only to see 096 on his feed and be killed too. Silently, using all the skills and stealth that they had been trained in, the squad of Delta Force operators slipped into the safe house. Their movements were perfectly synchronized, practiced hours and hours at a time. They checked corners. Two would sweep one room of the building whilst two more protected them and none of them would move on until they confirmed that the area was clear. Floor by floor, they worked their way up the building, ascending closer and closer to where the hatchet was. The operators were fully expecting to meet armed resistance from the hatchet's loyalists when they arrived. The fact that the place was so quiet didn't seem right. In fact, none of the lights were on either. The Delta Force unit needed to wear night vision just to navigate their way around. Despite it seeming suspicious, none of them could have guessed it was intentional. Agent Lane had set everything up to work perfectly. Arriving at one room, the Special Forces troops could hear the sound of someone behind the door. Their voice was muffled, like something was obscuring their mouth and preventing them from speaking. This was it. The team lined up against the nearest wall and placed an explosive charge on the door. With a mighty explosion, the entrance burst wide open, and the team filed in, weapons trained on the room's sole occupant. They could see, through the hazy green of their goggles, a figure sat in a chair. No, restrained to a chair, with something in front of him. It looked like a frame, a photograph in a frame. Who sits in front of a photo in the dark? Suddenly, the lights came up, causing the operator's night vision goggles to beam bright white straight into their eyes. The second the lights came on, the camera's agent lane was watching through cut off, and he purged the hard drive they were connected to leaving no recording, no evidence of the situation he'd engineered. Meanwhile, as the room was illuminated, the first of the Delta Force team to take off his goggles saw who it was tied to the chair. It was the hatchet, 
bound by his wrists and ankles, eyes pried open so he couldn't look away from the framed photo in front of him. A photo of SCP-096. Suddenly, within the blink of an eye, the tall, slender creature had appeared in the room with the captive terrorist. The Deltas, removing their goggles, turned in horror to see 096 slaughtering their target. And the moment they looked at it, the wailing shy guy started bearing down on them, too. CONTACT! Their captain yelled. OPEN FIRE! HOSTILE CONTACT! They started shooting their bullets having little effect on the looming, wiry monster as it came at each of the squad one by one. The muzzle flashes illuminated the oncoming anomaly. Those brief glimpses of it flickering of gunfire made it look all the more horrifying. Screams filled the room, echoing through the building as SCP-096 decimated the team that had unknowingly been sent in to kill it. One of the Deltas was still struggling with his night vision, unable to detach them from his face thanks to a clasp that had gotten stuck. All he could hear were his squadmates around him being killed, but with no way of seeing what was happening. Private! Private! The captain gurgled. He sounded hurt, but the operator couldn't see how badly or what had attacked him. Shoot the thing! Shoot it now! I can't see, sir! He yelled back, goggles still strapped to his face, eyes shut to keep out the searing whiteness. Ten o'clock! The captain replied, directing his subordinate to aim his weapon slightly to the left. There was a sickening, twisting sound and the captain's voice cut out. The private fired, his shot winging the creature. It whimpered, then seemed to vanish as quickly as it had arrived. Pulling a combat knife from the sheath on his belt, the operator was able to cut the strap, keeping the goggles over his eyes. When his vision cleared, he looked around to see an empty room smeared in blood. Even the hatchet hadn't survived, killed in the chair he'd been held in. The operator took a closer look at the photo the terrorist had been made to look directly at, it was hideous, tall, and thin, arms that looked too long and a huge mouth. And now, it was behind him. It would never stop killing anyone that looked at it. Want an anomaly of your own? Check out scpswag.com for high-quality SCP merch. Now go and check out Can SCP-096 Chase Its Victims Across the Multiverse? And SCP-096 Tale, A Lesson in Power for more 096 antics.